Yes, 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 yes. Back again on this one. We are looking at this club. Chelsea in the mud for me. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening at that club. Welcoming everybody onto the show. The dawn in the building. Please press like on the video. This is the first time you're watching this. This is one higher TV. I'm talking about Intercontinental TV. Want to quickly talk about this Chelsea club? <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. The blues. I'm going to call on this man. This man from uh, that side. I'm talking about this. I'm for this guy. Prof in the building with me. Let's discuss. Let's talk about why Enzo Mareska in business with Chelsea again. What's going on with that club? I'm not always here. Please find the like on the video for this man coming on on this show. Prof, talk to me. You are live. Can you hear Hello. me? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you very well. Good evening, everybody. Good evening to our listeners today on this beautiful Tuesday evening and around the world. We're yeah. here back on the hot spot trend to talk football. And the news, the latest uh, sports news right now is uh, mm. is the potential almost done signing of Enzo Maresca, the Leicester City manager, former Pep Guardiola's assistant, is imminent. The signing is imminent now to Chelsea. So we are here to dissect the whole issue. All right, please, 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 smash the like on the video for this man. Welcoming you once again, Prof. Let's discuss what with this is. This guy's going to be success, or what's this? This guy I'm talking about, Enzo Maresca. Are you happy? How are you feeling? It's going to bring success from you. Yeah, opinion. talk to me. Uh, I mean, if he, the only positive right now that we Chelsea fans can hold on to is that the 44 years old is an Italian, mm. and uh, we have good good memories of the previous Italian managers that have worked in Chelsea. I think seven out of the last eight managers that has worked uh, for Chelsea have all been successful in terms of winning trophies. The likes of Carlo Ancelotti, who won a double in 2009-2010. We also have uh, Mauricio Sarri, who mm. won the uh, Europa League as Europa well. League. Yes, you know, we have Gianluigi Vialli, who won the FA Cup. We have... Uh, you know, uh, some Italian man, Antonio Conte, yeah, you know, who also did well and won the, the Premier League. So we have a good history with Italian managers. So if that is anything to go by, then the Chelsea fans uh, must be feeling mm. optimistic about this in, this appointment. But uh, this is a relatively um, inexperienced manager at the highest level. He has just, I think he worked on, he obviously worked on that Pep uh, in Man City. He was one of the Pep's assistants when they won the, the treble. Uh, uh, no, okay, no, they won the treble last season, so it was it was in Leicester City, yeah, two seasons ago. So he worked yeah. under Pep when they won the treble, two seasons ago, he went to Leicester City, uh, last season and brought them back up. So he's relatively inexperienced, haven't, he hasn't managed the team properly, uh, at the highest level on his own. But you know, the signs, the, the thinking be, behind this signing, mm. uh, what I can say is the Chelsea board. The Chelsea hierarchy, the likes of uh, Todd Bolly and Egbali, uh, the the technical directors of football, Lawrence Stewart and Paul Stanley, they've identified this manager as um, a man who is ready to um, bring their plans into life. You know, to bring the plans that they have for the club into life in terms of the on the pitch play, the way they want to play football. You know, I think these directors have a clear idea of how they want to play. And it's not too far away from the way Pep Guardiola plays. You know, we keep talking about Pep Guardiola and how his influence is, his imprint is all over the fo- all over football world today. And that's why it's being regarded widely as one of the greatest managers of all time. We can see that in his lifetime, his subordinates, the people who have worked with him, likes of Mikel Ateta, Krips and Company, Xabi Alonso, Xavi, you know, Eric Ten Hag, we worked with him at Bayern. We can see that his subordinates are all, uh, you know, doing things doing relatively well all around the corner, all around the, the all around Europe. So I think this must be the leaf that uh, the Chelsea hierarchy have, have looked at and they studied. And they didn't want they wanted they wanted they wanted a manager who would not uh, be involved at all in the back in the, the backroom activities. They would have a say in the signings of the football players. Well, are you are you uh, will you be comfortable with that, coach. Prof? Do you think uh, Chelsea? Yeah, yeah, you know, personally, I mean, yeah you, personally. Does it make sense at this moment? I mean, a manager yeah, will not yeah. have any say in signings. In uh, what is what? What's your take on that? Yeah, for me, and uh, you can spin it both ways, right? Some people will tell you 
that they want the managers to be involved in transfers because then, you know, uh, you're backing the manager. Is the reason why they use the word back the manager? But for me, I prefer the the model of. I, I think for me, I think if you're not Pep Guardiola, or if you're not one of the best managers in the world in terms of Carlo Ancelotti, Pep Guardiola, maybe Jurgen Klopp, and um, and managers like that, I think those managers have worked their way up, and you can trust their judgment. So when they tell you they want the player, I think those kind of A-class managers, you have to back them. They have mm. to have a say in the dressing room. But when you come to the B-list managers, C-list managers like the likes of Enzo Maresca now, I think it's ideal the kind of situation is walking into. So we, as the Chelsea board, have, they've, they've, they've gotten good directors of football who have identified the style of play and assigning players that align with that style, of, that pattern of play that they want. Okay. So if you look at the signings they've made, they've made brilliant signings in terms of Caicedo. They are giving you know, uh, Cole Palmer, who did very well, Christopher Nkunku, this very technical kind of PR, some young talents coming into it. So I think it's a it's a perfect situation for the likes of a, for a manager like Enzo Maresca because they already have the tools that he would like to work with. They've identified that Maresca likes to play the position football, pass the ball, high press and all that. These are the tools that you should work with. I think mm. that way, what you do with, as a club is, even if Maresca doesn't perform up to his duty, you stick to your principles of this is how I want to play, and you can then move him on and bring another manager who is attuned to that style of play. But I so, think if you give too much power to such a manager and he buys his own players, can you imagine if he doesn't succeed? What then happens to those players when the next manager comes in? Does it mean the next manager too will ask for his own players and you keep changing, changing players? And this is the model that Chelsea has followed for years under Roman Abramovich. Although it was successful, but that's why Chelsea did not did not have a, 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 a steady a, a steady a steady challenge at the challenge. top like with Man City is yes we would win under Mourinho two seasons we'll fall back then we'll, we'll collect Ancelotti we'll, he will sign his own players we'll win we'll fall back we'll collect Mauricio Sarri he'll win small we'll fall back we'll see Dink we'll come as a so we've been up and down under Roma but, but because the success was not too far far off was not too far between Chelsea fans didn't realise that it was not a sustainable model I think the model that they are trying to go for and if it works there's a big if there if, mm, if the that's if. Got, that's what yes, I want to big do. if there because yeah. it's high risk, high reward. That's what you're mm. doing. It's high risk, high reward. This is a, this is a very re relatively uh, um, um, inexperienced manager, and this can go badly wrong. And if it goes wrong, it's not on the manager. It's not on anybody. It's on is on the directors. It's on Paul with Stanley. It's on Leroy Stewart, and it's on Todd Bowley because they've chosen to go this direction. They've chosen to give a manager who is mm. relatively inexperienced five years contract. That means they are telling you that all guns, they are putting all their total trust on him. They believe that this man is the one to take Chelsea to that level, play the style of football, the football they want, and sustain that period at, sustain that period at the top. So for me, I can't judge this signing at this moment in time. To be honest, I think it's a signing that we have to give time to marinate. You know, I think uh, the manager has to start well. He yeah. has to start well in his first five games to win the trophy. Absolutely, the that's fans. that's it. Yes, that's it. Yes, that's because because it. if you if you start badly, if you say you, you lost your first three games, the Chelsea fans are going to turn on you. The pressure will be high, <laughs> and yeah, the pressure will be high for him to cope. So I no think time needs, wasting. Yeah, but but I think the appointment has come at the right time because he's a manager that has a lot of you know he has to change the style, the, the identity of these players, and then he has to go in there from right from preseason. To put in his identity on the, on the on the player, so I think it's the right time. The signing is coming as a, as a very very right time for him. He has all the precision to work with them hmm. and do everything. So yeah, for me, like I said, it's high risk high reward. We just have to hold on and wait. For me, I give him to December before I know where we're going as a club. You know, hmm. by December I would be very clear if this is the right man to take us forward or not. And then also to be there are some things that need to be seen in, uh, with the manager. What is his man management like? How can yeah. he handle, you know, uh, uh, pressure? How can he speak to the media? Is it good talking to the media? Because it's different speaking to the media from a Leicester City um, uh, point of view and from a Chelsea point of view. So these are the um, um, things that we need to watch out for, that we need to look out for in, in, uh, in, this, in this new manager. Obviously. Wow, that's a massive one, bro. Uh, Prof, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on this yeah. one. I really yeah. appreciate this one. Massive love, bro. Take it easy. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right, people. Smash the like on the video. This is how I can go tonight. I'm not, I'm not lying. This is I don't just know what is going on with Chelsea, uh, whether they're making the right choice or whatever. Please drop your comments. What do you feel about these changes coming up on this new manager coming up from Chelsea? If I'm talking about this manager, 
Enzo, Enzo, Enzo Paparazzi. I'm talking about Enzo Mareska. Please drop your comment. This is Africa. Go, subscribe, you like all the videos, subscribe to the channel. Don't signing out. Bye for now.